Good morning and welcome to our worship in Bog Hall Church. I'm going to um, share in bread and wine today, um, sort of stripped down home communion version. Well, I hope and pray that all is well with you and your family. It's been another hard week for many. For some, the days and weeks crawl into each other, and the lack of contact with others grows more painful. And of course, the news is filled with conflict and disruption. The global pa pandemic continues to throw up more confusion and disorientation for us. We're faced with more nuanced arguments and we're drawn to take sides. Global, global problems are brought back to claim our allegiances. And history shows how easily manipulated we can be by the powerful. We can shy from the truth and follow the crowd. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus warns the disciples of what they will face when they follow him. A theologian once summed up Jesus' message with these few words. Don't love and you will die. Love and they will kill you. It sort of sums up our reading for this morning. So on that uplifting thought, let's call ourselves to worship. Our psalm for today is Psalm 116 and it's sung in Jewish homes at Passover. In the psalm, the psalmist hangs between life and death and now he praises God for life, for a second chance at life. The cup of salvation is lifted up in thanksgiving. From the depths of desperation comes praise. What the psalmist did with their second chance of life is not known, but what a joyous announcement of that new beginning. Psalm 116, reading from verse 12. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's sing a opening hymn. All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. Give me four two strings, all have to be glad. to God in prayer and say the Lord's Prayer together. 
So let's pray. God of grace and God of mercy, it can be a struggle at times, a struggle to keep a focus on you, a struggle to be the best that we are, a struggle to remain hopeful and joyous. There are days when the duvet calls to retreat from the world. There are days when we just long to hear another's voice. There are days when tiredness crawls on tiredness. And there are days when little surprises sneak in joy. A phone call, a flower, a garden visitor, a glimpse of another world within, a peace, a hope, a you. Down telephone wires and across the internet highways, through letter boxes and charts at doors, hope and joy and warmth and love comes, given and received, and somewhere in the space between is you, the God of the in-between, the God of the giver and the receiver, the God of the at the right time, the just when I needed it, the glad to afford it. For that we will lift up the cup of salvation and we will meet you there, lip to lip, sip to sip, in brokenness and bloodshed, we will meet you there and be at peace. So hear us as we, your family of faith, join our voices in the prayer that unites us in our separation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The set's readings for the church will take us through the book of Romans over the summer. Paul writes to the churches in Rome to people that he did not know. And he writes because he hoped to visit them, so he wants them to get to know a little bit about him. But he also writes to ask for their prayers as he prepares to return to Jerusalem, to return with a collection from the Gentile churches for the J Jerusalem community. This was an important act for Paul, and there was ongoing hostility about his focus on the Gentiles and not the lost sheep of Israel. And he writes because he hears of the trouble in Rome. Jews had been expelled from Rome and they were now being allowed to return. Paul was concerned what might happen as they returned. He wanted to make sure that these small churches welcomed the returning Jewish Christians back into their fold. Paul was always worried about the possibilities of divisions. Reading from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, 
though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Our Gospel reading takes us back to the time before Paul, and it begins with the excitement of the disciples being sent out for the first time on their own, a mission of healing and proclaiming the kingdom of God. This reading ends with a warning that makes it surprising that the disciples would even think about heading out. The good news comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, reading from verse 1 to 23. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanian and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts, no bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff, for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Truly I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father to his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly, I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Amen. Not sure if it's the most attractive way of sending the twelve out, and it certainly sounds a challenging situation conflicts and divisions. There always seems to be conflicts and divisions. But in the midst of this reading, we risk missing that it's pretty remarkable that the disciples came together and stayed together. How Matthew, the Roman collaborator, 
and Simon the zealot, the freedom fighter, how they could even talk to each other was a bit of a miracle in itself. And I think Jesus sending them out with nothing is another way of stripping them of the attitudes that sees others as threats and competitors. No sandals or staff, no bag or money, and they're to eat and stay with those they meet on the road. What we as a society are not good at doing is hearing the story of those who are different from us. And when we do, we tend to bring all our baggage with us. Dressed in our attitudes and prejudices and our view of the world. And when we do meet with others, we tend to seek neutral ground. We do not like to rely on and be dependent on the hospitality of others. But when we are dependent on others, then we really get to know their lives. Jesus sends the disciples out to the lost sheep of Israel, clear instructions not to go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but that will come later. It's as if Jesus is saying to them, let's start you off with your own folks. Bigger challenges will come, and they do. For Jesus has history of being provocative. When Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan, the despised Samaritan as the hero of the story, there must have been howls of protest and heckles from the crowd as Jesus exposed their baggage and prejudice. When we go with our prejudices and our attitudes stripped from us, it will feel like being a sheep among wolves. And the wolves come in many forms. Wolves dressed in sheep's clothing are often the hardest to see and the hardest to resist. Saul found Jesus so offensive, he dedicated his life to silencing the Jesus movement. His conversion and change of name to Paul sees him dedicating his life to bringing the gospel to the Gentiles. It's hard to know what Paul means when he writes about boasting in our suffering. Perhaps it has to do with the two things Paul often returns to in his letters. One is his dramatic conversion, as if he needs to talk about it over and over again to make sense of it. The other thing he returns to is his previous role in killing the followers of Jesus. It's as if he has to confess to everyone before he finds peace. Saul moves from a protector of the tradition to Paul, a radical interpreter of the gospel. And Paul and Peter would clash their interpretations of Jesus' teaching appearing incompatible, and yet they too found peace. Perhaps like the psalmist who has survived his health scare and can look back with relief and thanksgiving, Paul looks back at his trials and sufferings and tries to make sense of it all. He writes that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint him. Maybe we all need to try to reframe this current situation. Where has endurance been formed in us just now? What has happened to our character? Can we see and live in hope? Do we really believe in a hope that does not disappoint? Well, Paul could look back and see that while he was weak, while he was a sinner and ungodly, Christ died for him. And so Christ must have died for all the weak, ungodly sinners. 
for Paul and Peter, for you and me. It will feel like hell, sharing our baggage and prejudices, but only then will we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and find a hope that does not disappoint. Amen. We are going to share in bread and wine, so let's sing our communion hymn. This is the Lord's table, as we invite Jesus into our homes, Jesus invites us to share in bread and wine. This is the food for all who hunger to be nourished, and this is the meal that unites us with our host and with each other. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And let's come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Great and wonderful are your works, God the Creator of all. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived our human life and knew our joys and sorrows. He showed your love. He healed the sick. He was a friend to sinners. In obedience to you, he took up his cross and died in love for us and all the world. You raised him from the dead to live and reign forever, the friend of sinners still. Therefore, with all the angels and with people of faith of all times and places, 
we lift up our hearts in joyful praise in the angel song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit to bless us and these gifts of bread and wine, that in communion with Christ our Lord, we may receive his life and remain his glad and faithful people until we feast with him in glory. As we share in the body and blood of Christ, may we become a living sacrifice, dedicated and fit for your acceptance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do this in obedience to Christ's example and command. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and said, This cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this, remembering him. This cup is a new covenant, sealed by Christ's blood, which was said, shed, that the sins of all might be forgiven. Drink it, remembering him. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Let's turn to God in prayer once more, sharing the prayer that the churches around Scotland have written for this Sunday. Right. Living God, you demonstrated your love for us through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are powerless, stand with us in our weakness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, you demonstrate your love for the world through the self-giving of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we remember those who are powerless in our world and stand with them in their weakness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as we stand with others, may we understand more fully the life we share in common. In understanding more fully, may we embrace the richness of the life you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, your Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life. May your love be poured into our hearts and our lives renewed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, 
embrace us and all creation in the love you demonstrate through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. We close by singing the hymn Christ Be Our Lord. That's wonderful hymn set to the tune I want to continue. of God which is beyond all our understanding. May that peace guard your hearts and your thoughts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, may that blessing rest gently in your hearts and your homes on this day and forevermore. Amen.